Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown to Torghast as a Death Knight, because I think Torghast is one of the few places in the game that players are still struggling with, and with higher wings or higher layers getting unlocked next week and the week after, uh, with us being able to go up to layer 6 and then layer 8 later on, I think it's important to point out some cool things that you can do as DKs to make your runs easier. Because let's face it, when you're at low gear, Torghast is not exactly the easiest thing in the world. I'm going to cover general anima powers and then one specific to blood, frost and unholy, as well as some cool combos that you can put together, which will make your life significantly easier, uh, but it does rely on RNG a little bit. So first off, a few tips. If you're struggling with Torghast as a DPS death knight, so unholy or frost, then I recommend trying out a blood DK because blood tends to be significantly easier. Um, you are usually not in danger of dying to anything and on the last boss you essentially just out heal his damage and just play um, the long game where it takes you a while but you'll kill him. Whereas with a DPS you kind of have to kill him quickly or you will end up just rotting out and dying. Alright, so let's start by going over the Death Knight powers. I'm just going to go down this list on Wowhead, tell you kind of what's good, what's not good, and at the end, I'm going to show you a few different combinations that you can put together to make some pretty OP builds um, if you happen to get lucky during your Torghast runs. Alright, so first up, we have Ancient Drake Breath. Um, whenever you Icebound Fortitude, you unleash an Ancient Drake, freezing all nearby enemies and dealing frost damage. On its own, this one's okay, but if you combine it with a few other anima powers, it is extremely powerful. Um, so I will talk about that towards the end of this, um, this list. Next we have Animate Armaments. Whenever you death grip something, you steal their weapon. It's okay, I haven't found anything that does a lot of damage, but in general, probably not one of the stronger ones. Then we have Blightstone, Outbreak, Blood Boil, and Howling Blast has an increased radius. Can be quite fun if you stack multiple of them, but not very practically useful. Then we have Blood Tinged Poker, Sacrificial Pact no longer has a cooldown, and Raise Dead's cooldown is reduced to 25 seconds. On its own, quite weak, but can be strong when combined with another Anima power that I will talk about later. Uh, bone Growing Juice during Pillar, Vampiric Blood, or Dark Transformation, your size, strength, and stamina are increased by 50%. This is probably one of the strongest ones that you can pick up. Um, it gives you a lot of extra damage. Um, so definitely if you see it, pick it up. Then we have Bone Harvester. Death Coil deals extra damage essentially and puts a dot on your target. Then if you kill something while the dot is on them, then they will be reanimated as a Risen Skulker or a Magus. If you're unholy and you see this, you automatically pick it up. You're essentially able to like generate a small army of Skulkers and Maguses. Not super useful since they changed them to reset um, when you enter a new floor. But previously you were able to just like generate an army and then go into the last boss with an army up. But as far as I'm aware, they changed this to where each time you go to a new level, um, your army resets. So not useful on the last boss, but can be quite fun for clearing the floors faster. Next we have Boundless Fortitude, Mind Freezing, uh, an enemy will activate IBF. So this is what I was talking about earlier. If you combine this power with Ancient Drake, every time you interrupt something, you will proc IBF and an Ancient Drake. So that is going to do a ton of damage and can be super useful. Uh, both just for clearing floors and for the last boss. Then we have Chains of Anguish. Chains of Ice binds enemies held together, causing them to share 50% of the damage taken. Not super useful. Then we have Creeping Decay. Death and Decay's radius is increased by 3 yards. Generally, not a super strong power. Wouldn't really bother with it. Dark Reaver's Lens. AMZ reflects harmful magical effects back to the caster. This can be good on the last boss if he casts a dot on you and you don't have an interrupt for it. You just AMZ and essentially reflect the dot. Dark Reaver's Ward, AMZ lasts 3 seconds longer, and you gain an additional 10% DR. This one can be pretty decent, but probably wouldn't bother with it if you have an offensive option uh, to choose from. Then we have Death Turf, you and your minions gain 10% haste while you're inside your DND. 
This one's actually quite strong if you can stack multiple of them. Um, and then you just keep dropping your DND, even if you're like a Frost DK, and you just gain a ton of haste. Um, pretty strong. Next, we have Entropic Pool. Death and Decay gains an additional charge. I've never actually seen this pop up. I'm not sure if it's blood specific, um, but if you have a bunch of Death Turfs trait, then it can be quite good. Otherwise, probably not super strong. Um, then we have Exterminator. Whenever you Death Grip a Marat, it explodes. Not super useful, wouldn't bother with it. Then we have Force Pull. Whenever you Death Grip something, it gets knocked down and enemies near it get knocked down. It's okay for a little extra CC, but again, not something I would pick. Next, we have the Horseman's Call. Your Death Gate calls forth a Horseman of the Ebon Blade to assist you in battle, um, but your Death Gate has a 10 minute cooldown. This one is really powerful because the ho any Horseman you call will deal a pretty significant amount of damage and they last through floors. So if you summon him on like you know, floor five, and you clear floor five in decent time, you will still have this up for floor six. And also, if you collect multiple of these powers, you can summon multiple horsemen. Um, so that's pretty cool. Next, we have Lich Robes. Uh, Lich Warren's cooldown is reduced by 10 seconds when you cast Death Strike. So this one on its own, not super useful, but if you combine it with two other powers, it can be quite strong. And I will talk about that when I get to the next power that you need to combine it with. Um, then we have Monstrous Concoction, Death Coils, Healing infuses you or your minions with Monstrous Power, increasing attack speed and damage by 15% for one minute. Uh, this one is pretty strong, but it's annoying to min-max because you have to keep this buff up on your pet if you're unholy, um, and on yourself. But outside of that, it is pretty powerful. Then we have Necromantic Bile, Sacrificial Pack deals 200% more damage, and the blast radius is increased. So this one is strong if you combine it with the trait that makes your sacrificial pact have not cool, no cooldown, this one, blood tinged poker. So if you have one blood tinged poker and you have multiple of the sacrificial pact explosion traits, then it can be quite strong, but in general, it is not really a combo that I go out of my way to get. A Cult Emitter, AMS removes all harmful magical effects. This one is really strong, um, and just you only need one of them. So a lot of the mobs in this game, or in Torghast, and the end boss tend to put dots on you. You just AMS and it removes all of them. Um, super useful to have, and a really good defensive. Um, then we have Pheromones, enemies damaged by your death and decay have a chance to cower in place for 3 seconds. It's okay, uh, nothing special. Then we have Plaguebringer, Moral Rant, Obliterate, and Fast Strength Strike causes your disease damage to occur 150% more quickly for 5 seconds. This one's pretty good, it just speeds up your dot ticks on your target. Um, in general, it is a pretty decent damaging one to pick up. Then we have Rune Hunter. Ashen Phylacteries have a 10% chance to contain a rune that affixes to your weapon to a maximum of 8 additional runes. So all of the different runes that you can put on your weapon as a DK, whenever you break phylacteries, which are like the vases, um, you have a chance of gaining one of those. So this is super strong because you can essentially have like Unendic Thirst, uh, Fallen Crusader, Razor Eyes, you know, all those different ones on your weapon at the same time. So that is pretty cool. Then we have Skull Bloomer. Death Coil deals 50% additional damage and healing. If you go for a Death Coil build, especially as Unholy, this can be extremely powerful. Um, next, we have Slick Eyes. Path of Frost increases your movement speed by 30%. This early on, I wouldn't bother with this just because you're better, better off taking either an offensive or a defensive option. But once you're getting to a point where you can speedrun uh, Torghast, this is going to be pretty useful. Next, we have Super Strain, your Frost Reaper, or Blood Plague, and Varian Plague also apply the other two diseases. Uh, this is the exact same as the Legendary. Then we have Tome of Sword Play. Mind Freeze's cooldown is reduced by 4 seconds when you successfully interrupt a cast. So if you stack multiple of these, you can essentially have Mind Freeze up always. So as soon as you interrupt something, it resets. So if you combine this power with Boundless Fortitude, and with Ancient Drake Breath, you can just spam interrupts, which will spam proc this Ancient Drake, 
and you will do so much damage that anything that you interrupt will just get instantly deleted pretty much um and since every single mob in Torghast casts something you that power is absolutely insane if you can put that combo together as a frost dk um you're pretty much unstoppable um all right next we have unbreakable cuffs um Oh, this is, I guess this was the Chains of Ice one. Chains of Ice strikes one additional target and lasts an additional three seconds. So this one you can actually stack, and for each one of these powers you get, your Chains of Ice will strike an additional target. So if you have three of them, you will strike three additional targets. And this works with Cold Heart. So if your Cold Heart is stacked to 20 and you hit it on your main target, each additional target that you hit with Chains of Ice will also get hit by Cold Heart. So this is really useful for clearing floors, but not very useful on the end boss. Next we have Undertaker's Crown. Lichborn causes you to radiate death coils onto your target or yourself while you're injured. So this one is super useful if you can put it together in a combo. So you will want Undertaker's Crown, then you will want the trait that reduces your Lichborn cooldown, Lich Robes, whenever you death strike. This means that Death Strike becomes like your default spender because you want to have Lichborn up as often as possible. And then you combo that together with Bone Harvester. Um, so you constantly have Lichborn up, you're constantly radiating Death Coils, and you're killing stuff. So you're constantly spawning um, either Risen Skulkers or Maguses or Magi. So those three together are really strong. And then as like a bonus, you can also get the trait that um, either infuses you or your pet because you will typically lichborn your or a death coil yourself while in lichborn as well so you get that benefit or you can also get the added bonus of extra death coil damage which you can also stack up so this skull bloomer so there's quite a bit of interaction between those five traits but the the must have ones are the lichborn radiates death coils uh targets with death coil that die get reanimated as skulkers and then a Death Strike reduces your Lichborn cooldown. Those are the three that you want, and then the two other ones are just kind of bonuses, if you can get them. Um, then moving down towards the end here, you can get Unending Thirst, uh, which is quite good, and you can get Unquenchable Blade, Army of the Dead, Dancing Rune Weapon, and Empower Rune Weapon have reduced cooldowns, and you can stack this up. Um, so pretty useful in general to have. Okay, then for the talent modification ones, these... If you get them, pretty much always pick them, like getting IA, Infected Claws, or Heartbreaker, really good. Um, getting RA, Bursting Swords, or Rapid Decomp, really good. The only one that I maybe wouldn't pick up is, um, is going to kind of depend on the talent or the spec that you're playing. But like if you're getting another utility talent uh, versus like you have another anima power choice that gives you actual damage, then take the damage one. But in general, getting an extra talent is always good. Uh, for the anima power specific ones, I'm not going to cover all of them. Um, so for the Kyrian, the only one that I think is decent is this one, Hate Forged. Uh, no idea how to say that. Shackle the Unworthy also increases your damage dealt to the target by 20%. This just makes your burst stronger. Um, and if you can combine a few other like combo abilities where you burst damage, you can have a pretty nice little burst window. The rest are kind of meh. Then for Venthyr, we have the only one I think is super good is Death's Deliverance. During Swarming Mist, Door of Shadows has no cooldown. Um, you can go pretty fast with this, um, but yeah, that's kind of the only one that I think is strong. Then for Necrolord, it's actually really useful to have the one that you extends the your Abomination limb. So if you pick like two or three of these up on a single target boss fight, you can have a bomb's limb up constantly. So I have a clip from last week, I believe, where I had a bomb's limb up from the beginning of the boss fight all the way to the end on layer three. So that one is super useful. Then for Night Fey, Corrupted Sapwood is pretty good. Um, the rest I don't think are all that useful. Um, but Corrupted Sapwood essentially allows you to stack your deaths to do higher and you also gain additional stacks per ability cast. So those are the DK ones. Uh, like I said, there's some really broken combos that you can put together, especially as Frost and Unholy. 
Okay, next let's go over the general powers. I'm only going to mention a few of them here um, because they're generally like pretty middle middle ground if you see some of these and you know you don't have a better option then may, you pick it up like if three percent versatility pops up then you take it uh so for phantasma powers these are generally just increased resources i usually take flat phantasma gain over like percent increase uh so i'd rather take th 300 phantasma than like 25 percent more uh, then for the Elithium powers, don't take any of these except for the Elithium weights because 75% heal reduction is pretty much a death sentence for Unholy um, or any of the DK specs really because we rely on self-healing a lot. For damaging powers, there's a few that are strong. Generally, any of these are kind of fine. Always prioritize taking single target powers over AoE powers just because the end boss is more difficult than the trash packs on the floors. So that's just a general rule of thumb to go off of. Uh, Frostbite Wand has one interesting interaction uh, that is only really happen if you get this as your last power. So for example, if you save all the orbs that you bought from the vendor on floor three and on floor six, and then use all of them before the boss. If Frostbite Wand is one of the powers that pops up, do not select it. Instead, start fighting the boss, get the boss to 50% health, and then select this power and it will just one-shot the boss. Um, otherwise, this one is really useful for speed clearing floors, but it will not help you with the boss fight at all. The rest of these, like the lens, is pretty strong whenever you just deal damage, uh, it will proc off of a lot of attacks. It's quite a nice little damage increase. Um, outside of that, the stats are always good, like 3% versatility, 3% mastery, 3% haste. Those are all strong. Also, if you ever get the choice between the stat procs, um, so for example, there are a few that will give you like 35% versatility or 35% mastery or 35% haste. Those can be quite powerful as well. Um, but outside of that, the general ones tend to be a little bit more underwhelming than the class-specific ones. And then, also as a rule of thumb, always go offense over defense. It is always better to kill the last boss as fast as possible, because the more time you spend on the last boss, the more difficult he becomes up to 10 stacks. Then once he reaches 10 stacks, you will pretty much rot over time, because you just won't be able to keep up with the self-healing versus the damage that he does. So those are my general tips for Death Knights. Um, I really hope those helped. And if you find any broken combinations that allow you to one-shot bosses or make your life in Torghast significantly easier, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave those there or join my Discord where we have daily discussions based on topics like this. Thanks for watching this video. Really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.